and our world, trusting God in all things. And we know from just turning on the news or the radio over the last week or two that the world needs people like us cultivating hope and love, and it can seem overwhelming so often. But our mantra that we learned last week in song, uh, I want to encourage you to stand and join in singing together this morning. We kind of learned it last week, so you got to sing it with confidence this week. It's that uh, Jana Stanfield song called All the Good. Terry's friend Jana wrote this, and uh, it reminds us that we can't do all the good the world needs, but the world needs all the good we can do. Right? Amen? All right. Will you stand and join in singing with us this morning? simple. I cannot do all the good that the world needs, but the world needs all the good that I can do. I cannot do all the good that the world needs, but the world Needs all the good that I can do. Okay, that was okay. <laughs> I think we can. I cannot do all the good that the world needs. But the world needs all the good. sound good. I cannot do all the good that the world needs, but the world needs all the good that I can do. I cannot do all the good that the world Three out of ten to a six out of ten. I think we can, we can get it yeah, up to a nine that, maybe so next we'll week. See. Yeah, there we go. All right, one second here. Well, in the next few moments, if you uh, would do us a favor and go to harmonysprings.org slash online and check in and let us know that you were here today, we certainly appreciate that and have been trying to reach out to all of our new friends and faces and guests here at Harmony Springs to say thanks for being a part of Harmony Springs and sticking with us as we get ourselves all organized here and uh, put together. I know I can hear them out there. We have kids here this morning and I want you to just uh, come up for a second with me. We're not going to have a full uh, children's moment this morning, but I just want you to come up to uh, the balloons over here. Come peer in here with me. Oh, 
Yeah, well, that happens. That happens. All right. Before you all go back to your class, I want to invite you to come with us. Tomorrow morning is Memorial Day, right? And we're going to meet at the high school at, starting at 9 o'clock. And this is one of the carts we're going to pull. And the trailer and the Jeep out there, we're going to drive. And what's in here that we're... If you come and help us tomorrow, what's the most fun thing about a parade? I know your answer already. <laughs> right? Getting candy? But what if we threw out candy? Would that also be fun? That would be fun. Yeah. Look at all this candy. Look at all this candy in here. So at the parade, the thing is, though, if you come tomorrow, uh, they've been having trouble over the years because some people come and they just start flinging candy at people's faces and hit them and hurt them. So we have to gently toss it to the side, right? Gently toss. All right. All right, so tomorrow, you have to wake your parents up at like 8 o'clock in the morning, even though they want to sleep in because it's a holiday. <laughs> I'm looking at Sarah's face right now. <laughs> yeah, right? That would be nice. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, okay. Uh, I remember those days. All right, so anyhow, come tomorrow, meet us. We're number 13 out there in the parking lot. And then we'll pull these, and we got these balloons to give away. And look at these other things we got to give away. This is pretty cool, too, huh? Beach balls. Yeah, so we'll help blow these up, and we'll throw these out and have a good time. Landon, you want to throw one out to your parents? There you go. Let's see it. Oh, yeah. All right. You want a beach ball? Yeah, take it. There's more back in the back room back there. We have plenty for you guys, too. Yes. All right, I have something I want to let you know, uh, a message to pass on to your parents from your teacher, classroom teacher. The next two weeks, if you're going to be here in church, uh, we're going to do some messy crafting. So parents, pay attention to what clothes you send your kids in because it may get a little crazy back there. I don't think crazy is the right word, right? I don't know, but you might get a little something on you. Uh, you're going to make... You guys are going to be making stepping stones with the little uh, jewels in them, and then we're going to put them out front by the church. So that's what you guys are going to work on for the next couple of weeks. Yes. You'll have to take that up. She wants to wear the clothes that she doesn't like and not tell you so that she can get them ruined so she doesn't have to wear them. <laughs> that's my paraphrase. You shouldn't, have, uh, you shouldn't have told your dad who's a pastor that, I think. All right, go on back. We send you. Go have fun. We'll see you tomorrow. Go help the local ones or something back there. Well, this morning, uh, Pastor Kim is visiting family uh, in the southern region, so uh, you're going to see me today, this morning, more often than usual. Whether you like that or hate it, uh, it is what it is, right? So, uh, there we go. I did want to say and ask for your help on a couple things, not just showing up for Memorial Day to help us uh, throw candy and beach balls and blow up balloons tomorrow morning, but uh, as well, as you know, we've been, since we built this building, we've been trying to do our best to make the inside work the way we need it to work so that we can uh, be as welcoming uh, to folks as they come in. One of those things we realized is a good problem for the church uh, around Palm Sunday and Easter, so we started having people uh, show up, and I've said this before, but People have asked me what we were doing to get so many people, new folks, to show up, and I said absolutely nothing. Uh, so that's a good thing, uh, because they're here for a reason, I think. And one of those things 
to be as uh, to be good hosts and welcoming as possible. We set up the first classroom back there. We realized we needed to repurpose that classroom to be uh, a bit of a toddler room. So if you love toddlers, <laughs> I'm looking at Shannon. Uh, okay, all right. If you love toddlers uh, and would be willing to spend an hour or so on Sunday mornings with them back in that room, uh, you know, the kinds of things toddlers do, toddling around and building blocks and uh, that sort of thing. It feels like a lifetime ago since our kids were that age, but uh, I do sort of remember it. So if you have interest or would be willing to help serve the church by uh, being one of the folks back there to help show our toddlers that are among us showing up uh, a good time, we would certainly appreciate it. I don't think, did we put together sign-up sheets? We didn't talk about that this morning or anything, but come and, uh, come and talk to me and I'll put your name down on the list, I guess, but all right. Thank you. Would you join me in prayer as we continue our gathering together this morning? Loving and gracious God, this morning we come uh, before you on this Memorial Day weekend and Although this weekend is filled with uh, family gatherings and times to remember, we also, of course, remember those who this holiday is for, those who have lost their lives in service to this country. In and through all the different gatherings that we may partake in and be part of over the next few days, we ask that you might weave your spirit's presence in and with us, among us, that we might continue to give thanks for all of those who went before us, who made those gatherings possible. Loving God, you are the Prince of Peace. You are the beginning and the end. You are everything in between. And when we look at the massiveness of the universe from beginning to end, we can acknowledge and realize that we are just a small speck on that spectrum. And yet the Prince of Peace looks at us and says, you are worthy of my love and each other's love. And so Lord, over these last few weeks, not only as the war seems to continue endlessly on in the Ukraine, but also the many wars that unfortunately we have to hear about and know about and experience in this country, rooted in hate and violence, Prince of Peace, we ask for your peace to come near to us now. Loving God, we confess that so often it is so easy for us to respond to things like what happened last week uh, with a social media post or our thoughts and prayers, and yet we know and acknowledge and confess that you call us to do so much more than that. You call us to speak up and to show up. And we confess that so often we fall short of doing the things we need to do. And so we ask for your forgiveness. Even in our own circles and families, so often there are so many things left undone that should have been done. God, we ask your forgiveness. And for the times where we have inadvertently or on purpose contributed to the hatred and violence in this world, God, forgive us. We ask your forgiveness. We know, Lord, that as you promise, that whenever we come before you and ask forgiveness, you are faithful and just to give us and grant us the grace and mercy we so desperately seek. And so, God, we are grateful today. We give thanks to you for the many blessings, for your patience with us in our humanity. We are grateful for the people that surround us, who have gone before us, who have made this life possible. We acknowledge that so often in the tragedy and sadness of life, things seem hopeless and desperate, 
And yet, Lord, we ask again and again, remind us that hope is not dead, that love is not gone, that you are here, right here, right now, with us, with open arms, welcoming us again to your table. You keep pulling up chairs for all of us, no matter how unworthy we may be or how unworthy we feel. Your table invites us to it again and again and again. Loving and gracious God, as we gather together as church today, we continue to ask that you might guide and direct us as this small gathering of people uh, envisions mighty and powerful things that we can do and join with you in doing to build the kingdom of God in this place here and now. We ask that your spirit might empower us, push us, to be the people you are calling us to be that the world needs right now. Loving God, we continue to ask that in our frailty, in our humanness, and all that we are, that you might continue to love and enfold us in your goodness, continue to speak words of belonging and kindness to us, and allow us to turn around that message and share it with the rest of the world whenever we leave this place. Loving God, for all of those amongst our congregation who are in need of your peace and presence and healing in these moments here and now, we ask for it. For those in our extended families who are still contracting and suffering with COVID, we continue to ask that you might eradicate that pandemic. For those who are not here this morning, who are traveling or about to travel, we ask for your presence to be with them. Continue to make us one, Lord Jesus, in this place, here and now, and whenever we leave. In your name we pray this as we speak together the words you taught us to pray so long ago, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power glory forever. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading as we continue through some selected passages from the Gospel of John. Today's comes from chapter 17, verses 20 through 26. Jesus says these words, I'm not praying just for these followers. I'm also praying for everyone else who will have faith because of what my followers will say about me. I want all of them to be one with each other, just as I am one with you and you are one with me. I also want them to be one with us. Then the people of this world will believe that you sent me. I've honored my followers in the same way you honored me in order that they may be one with each other just as we are one. I'm one with them and you are one with me so that they may become completely one. Then this world's people will know that you sent me. They will know that you love my followers as much as you love me. Father, I want everyone you have given me to be with me wherever I am. Then they will see the glory you have given me because you loved me before the world was created. Good Father, the people of this world don't know, but I know you and my followers know that you sent me. I told them what you're like and I will tell them even more then the love you have for me will become part of them, and I will be one with them. Here ends the reading. May God add its blessing to this reading this day. For the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord, that will stand forever. Amen. Well, on this Memorial Day weekend, friends, we're finishing up this sermon series we've been hitting over the last few weeks called The Art of Gathering. 
At the beginning of this series, we talked about how this series on Sunday mornings here has been based on the book with the same title, The Art of Gathering, by a woman named Priya Parker. And she shares chapter by chapter throughout this book some advice on hosting gatherings is essentially what the book is. And I've said this before, but I will say it again. It's not a church book necessarily, but it is also a church book. It's a book about hosting all sorts of gatherings. Uh, she shares stories throughout the chapters of hosting or putting together uh, business workshops or seminars for an area or field of <laughs> expertise, hosting dinner parties, even church gatherings. So anytime people come together, whenever we gather together, Priya Parker would say we have some responsibilities if we're the ones hosting it, that we ought to uh, not abdicate our responsibilities, but instead embrace them and take them on and be active in our role as hosts in whatever gathering it may be. And last week, as I was reading through this chapter by chapter, we talked about how one piece of advice she gives us at the beginning of a gathering, whatever it is, uh, that her advice is you shouldn't just start it with logistics, which is what we had been doing here at Harmony Springs at the beginning of every service, right? When I would stand up and say, uh, check in online, the bathrooms are back there, you know, all that good stuff. And she shares the story of a pastor who got up at a funeral at the beginning and immediately jumped into uh, where people were parking and where the reception was going to be afterwards. And when we do that, we miss a moment of opening that can be powerful and meaningful. And so last week we started uh, with those moments of cultivation to highlight and reflect on the things we are able to accomplish together as a church to fulfill our mission to cultivate hope and love the way the kind of way that Jesus did and so uh, week by week we've gone through this and of course at the end of this book she sort of walks through chapter by chapter the chronology of a gathering right uh, introduce people to each other at the beginning don't just sort of relax like be active in the role as a host whatever it may be think about why you're gathering and how that might inform what you're doing together or what your gathering looks like but then, of course, at the end of this book and at the end of every gathering is a sad truth. Any gathering, no matter what it is, has to come to an end at some point. The scripture we read today uh, is well known as some of Jesus' last words uh, before he goes uh, magically up into the sky or wherever Jesus mystically is, right? Uh, and Jesus says these last words and says, uh, here's my final prayer for not just you gathered here, but also for anybody else that will follow in your footsteps that will be part of me. And I don't know if you saw it, but Jesus seems to repeat himself a number of times in this passage. And it's all, it seems to all be about unity. He says in that Jesus-y sort of first century way, right? I know you, God. God, you know me. I know them. We're all in this together. And my prayer is that we all might be one. Over these last few weeks, as we've talked about the art of gathering in this book, we've moved our communion table into the center of our room to remind us all again what we're about here at Harmony Springs, that the table invites us and calls us to be a part of it, and it's the center of all we do. And this table that we celebrate is an open table where all are welcome. In fact, I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, there are many disciples' churches that, in fact, when, if you go to them and are a part of their service, the clergy actually don't participate in the communion part of the service. We clergy sit down like everybody else, and the elders of the church or people of the church come forward and offer the words of intention and prayer. There are many disciples' churches that function like that on Sunday. It's good for us to be reminded that no matter what position we hold in life, no matter how, up, how far up we may be on the food chain, when it comes to Jesus, we are all equal at the table pastor or not, president or not, world leader or not. Church at our best, I think, 
is a bunch of misfit people sitting around the table who are part of all walks of life. Some of us live in the nice neighborhoods, some of us don't. Some of us drive expensive cars, some of us don't. We're all across the board, aren't we? Church at its best, I think, is an equalizer. No matter who we are, or where we're from, or what our status is, the table is an equal place for all of us. And church, just like that, I think, uh, is a place, like Priya Parker would describe in her book at the end here, where we come together for a set period of time in this gathering or worship service. We gather around the table symbolically. We pull up a chair. We receive Christ's body and blood again, week by week, over and over. And yet, it doesn't, it's not a thing that continues on and on. We come and we go in life, don't we? Jesus knew that truth when he shared these words with his disciples then, that Jesus was with them for a set period of time, and then ascension. It's the same here in church, just like any other gathering. We come in, we find meaning, we sit at the table, and then we go. Sometimes it's just as easy as that. Priya Parker, in her last chapter of this book here, highlights two things that are important when things come to an end, any gathering comes to an end. She says this and highlights these two things, looking inward, that it's important for us at the end of any gathering to look inward and then turn outward. She writes, a strong closing has two phases, corresponding to two distinct needs among people. Looking inward and turning outward. Looking inward and taking a moment to understand, remember, acknowledge, and reflect on what just transpired, and to bond as a group one last time. And then turning outward is about preparing to be part, to part from one another, and retake your place in the world. One commentator on this passage, talking about Jesus' prayer for unity, says this, John's theme of unity has the Christian community as its focus, but ultimately its theology is more inclusive than that. When we run with it, we find it opens up possibilities for all humanity and for all creation. Jesus offers a prayer of blessing as his closing, and it's all about carrying that sense of unity his disciples found together into the rest of their lives. It's exactly what we have to do anytime we gather around Christ's table. Remember and then turn outward. Remember and then turn outward. This last week I've thought about how we do that or questioned how we do that as church. When we gather together, the ending of our gathering is often a benediction, right? Pastor Kim or another pastor will stand up and say, uh, may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may you go in peace, right? And then uh, the next week, we come back together again. And I stand up, usually five minutes late, and say, uh, here we are again. Here we are again together. There's a consistent opening and closing of things. But it's important for us to find meaning when we are here together, to reflect on it, and then take that meaning out into the rest of the world. We do this at our house, and maybe this is a way that you can translate this into your own home. We haven't done it in a while, but it's one of uh, my wife, the social worker and counselor's go-tos in our house. Uh, When we sit around the table, having the kids talk about their ups and downs of the day. Or Priya Parker calls it uh, rose and thorn moments where we look at, you, look at your kids or each other and say, uh, what was the highlight of your day? What was the best part of your day? And then, what was the worst part of your day? It's one gift that church, and so often we outside of church, can offer to each other a moment to just reflect. Life is so busy all the time that when we can pause for a moment and take time to reflect on 
our experiences and what they mean, something magical happens, something mystical happens, and it changes us. It transforms us and allows us to take that meaning out into the world. Looking back is just one aspect of turning inward. Another, Priya Parker writes, is connecting us to each other one last time. To have an affirming moment of recalling not what we did here, but who we were here. I have attended other churches and pastored other churches. And I have to tell you this, every day, every Sunday, every time we gather together, the thought always floods over me or crosses through my mind how lucky and blessed I am to pastor and be a part of this congregation. Because my friends, we have something special here that a lot of other churches have not been able to put their finger on. I would even venture to say it's a living out of the prayer of Jesus that he shared with his disciples in this chapter 17 of the Gospel of John, a sense of unity. We are and can be protective of that unity here at Harmony Springs because it can fall apart so quickly, can it? I've been a part of churches. You've been a part of churches. I know so many of your stories where we have left a congregational meeting shaking our head because we were just arguing about the color of the carpet or the curtains instead of the things that really matter, like feeding people, being together, finding meaning and spirituality in and through all of life. We have something special here to maintain and to make sure that we protect. I was talking to a friend not too long ago, and I've shared these stories with you, but uh, I have to tell you this, as I think about this and what we have here at Harmony Springs when we gather, uh, I, not every, I will just say this, not, I'm struggling to find my words here because I want to say it the right way. Uh, not every pastor pastors the church that they would attend if they wanted to, if they could. Does that make sense? Sometimes we take the job that's there. It's the truth, right? Uh, if I stop being your pastor here at Harmony Springs, now I know there are sort of clergy things where you hire another pastor and we're not supposed to come to the church, but I, I would either come here unpaid or find another church just like Harmony Springs to start attending. And I'm so happy every time I walk in these doors that our kids can come in these doors of this church that celebrates a table as, a, as its center that is inclusive and welcoming of my own kids. Whether it's being accepting of our youngest who is on the spectrum or giving grace and love to another of our children by inviting them over to make cookies when she misses Grandma Liz, right? I don't know, maybe I'm not putting the right words together, but I hope you get the gist. Uh, I love serving and being here at Harmony Springs because we're doing so much good in the world, and to be honest, so many churches turn inward and forget to ever find meaning and then look outward. It's such a simple thing, but so often it gets lost in church, in life, in our families. It's a deep truth that spreads across all of us, no matter where we are or where we find ourselves. One last question, I guess, that Priya Parker offers in this last chapter of this book, and I think it's one that we have to ask any time we gather together in church or any sort of gathering, and it's simply this question, which lingers in my mind and that I leave with you, I guess. She says this, uh, what of this world in this gathering, what of this world here in this place do I want to bring back with me to the other worlds in which I'm a part? What of this world? What of gathering around Christ's table? What of being a part of Harmony Springs? Do we want to take from here 
and bring it into other parts of our lives. To be honest, there are churches I've been a part of, know about, and read about, that there are no parts of that church I would want to bring into any other parts of my life. This church, there is 100% of what we do here that I would bring into all the other areas of my life, and I couldn't be more thankful and grateful. This week, as I was thinking about how gatherings have to come to a close, reading this chapter and reading Jesus' final prayer with us, I, kept, uh, I got a song stuck in my head that I just keep sort of humming and singing around the house. Uh, I'm about to turn 43 years old, so if you're around the same age as me, give or take, uh, you may know this semi-sonic, semi-sonic song. Closing time. Closing time. Open all the doors and let the work, right? All right, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to make you suffer for the rest. I knew Terry would pick it up when I just started singing. We know some, there's some, a couple of lines in that song that are highlights, like uh, you, can't stay, you can't stay here, but you don't have to go home, right? Uh, but I was reading through the, the lyrics. Closing time, open the doors and let you out into the world. Closing time, turn all of the lights on over every boy and every girl. I love this line. So gather up your jackets, move it to the exits. I hope you found a friend. Closing time, every new beginning, right? I know you want to sing it too. Comes from some other beginning's end. Closing time, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Christ's table that we have celebrated over these last few weeks in this sermon series, The Art of Gathering, is an invitation to generosity based on a simple and inclusive understanding of faith in Jesus, we identify God's generous hand stretched out. John encourages us to think centrally and simply. John encourages us to think theologically or theocentrically. Jesus only matters because God matters. Oneness is sharing God's life as love in a broad and inclusive platform upon which many can stand and which can tolerate great diversity. There's no place for hate, prejudice, or writing people off at God's table. That ne necessarily excludes some people who, who refuse some inclusiveness. John's style of theology here accounted for gives support to who we are as a church. We live out a generous, loving theology. It's what the table means to us here. And it's what we take from here out into our lives. Amen? Amen. It's not closing time, but it is a good camp song. Pass it on. Will you sing it with us? begin 
to sing and the flowers start their blooming that's how it is with God's love once you've experienced it you want to sing it's fresh like spring you want to This happiness that I've found On God you can depend It matters not where you're bound I'll shout from the mountain top I want the world to know The God of love has come Well, again, we gather at the table that is centered in who we are and what we're about here at Harmony Springs. We welcome all to this table as we remember that Jesus invited all to his table. We remember on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his disciples in the upper room. He broke bread with them and he said, this is my body which is broken unto you. And in the same way, after dinner, he took a cup and blessed it and said, this is my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. He reminded them, as he does us, that as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we do so in remembrance of Christ. May Christ be alive here and now for us as we receive again the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you join us in prayer? Let us pray. Dear Lord, it is no longer we who live, but you who lives in us due to this table. Through this sacrament, we belong to you. You are the law of our life, our interior strength of our being and our actions. You are the hidden light of our spirit, the flame that burns in the depths of our heart. Through this cup and through this bread we take this morning, let us be transfigured by your eternal light. Let it be so. In your name, amen. Amen. My friends, the table was set. Will you come and receive? Friends, take eat and be blessed. We'll gather soon. 
where angels sing. We'll see the glory of our Lord and coming King. Now we anticipate the feast for which we wait. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. Now we anticipate the feast for which we wait. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. All right, now the housekeeping stuff. A few things to let you know about that you can be a part of. Of course, uh, come and help us uh, walk that mile, mile and a half or so tomorrow morning. We step off at 10 o'clock, so you can show up. Uh, I think you can park at the FedEx building across the street and then walk over to the high school. We're number 13. We'll uh, be gathering there starting at 9 o'clock. We'll be blowing up, putting helium in, in these balloons. Uh, the last year, I know it's been a few years, the last year we blew up balloons with helium. Uh, I remember we just had a big wad of balloons on strings and when we stepped out onto the street, the kids just like right on top of us. So be prepared for that, I guess. Uh, but please come and be a part of that. Uh, Wednesday, this coming Wednesday at six o'clock is the last of our lecture series. Uh, for this go around, I guess, we have one uh, more that's gonna be at the end of June, but we'll let uh, We'll let you know about that when the time gets closer. But uh, this Wednesday is Professor Mark Graham from the College of Worcester. Kevin had this connection with us since uh, he is a religion major at the College of Worcester. So uh, he is, Professor Graham's gonna come and talk about the similarities between Buddhism and Christianity. If you wanna come in person, uh, you can do that or uh, join us online using the same Google Meet that we use uh, at church. A couple of other things that I want to ask for your help with. Uh, at staff meeting this last week, we were listing out, uh, one of us, I think, said something like, well, we should put a sign-up sheet for that. And then uh, I started thinking of all the things we need help with, and I was thinking uh, we could just have a whole table of sign-up sheets, I think, at some point. So uh, not only the nursery, but also uh, the idea was passed around that we all, since we're adopting East Liberty Park and going and planting there on June 12th, right? Is that the... Uh, after church, uh, that maybe you all would be willing to also adopt a parking lot island out in the parking lot to pull some weeds. Uh, thank you to the Benjamins for pulling the ones around the church. We're hoping that you'll continue keeping an eye on those. Uh, but the other parking lot uh, islands out there need some of us to keep an eye on to pluck those weeds. Uh, hopefully, we put down landscaping fabric. It shouldn't be too hard. Yeah, Debbie. They're tricky making them look like rocks. That's. Uh, I'm going to send Javon. We're going to send Javon out there. Uh, Javon hates birds, so that'll. Uh, okay. Well, if you're taking on that particular island, I guess be careful, right? So, uh, we've. It's nice to see all the wildlife that we're able to uh, host here on our nine acres. Uh, so. Killdeer? Killdeer. Kill not wasp. No, not wasp. Bird. Yeah, he's just going to squawk at you. All right, I totally lost my train of thought on what else we needed. But uh, Jennifer, yeah, what else do we need people's help with?
very good. Uh, we also wouldn't turn down any help if anybody wants to uh, come and use the push mower and weed whacker. We would certainly, uh, whew, we got a lot to take care of out there, don't we? All right, enough of that. We'll uh, send out an email with a reminder of all of those opportunities that you can sign up for and be involved in here to continue to create as nice and inclusive place as possible here at Harmony Springs. So, uh, my friends, thank you for being here this morning with us for being a part of this sermon series on gathering together. I hope that in this series you found some meaning and inspiration as we move forward together from this place and turn outward. May we take what we love here and manifest it anywhere we are, everywhere we are. And may God's face shine upon you, be gracious unto you, and bless you as you do so. Amen? Have a good Memorial Day. Grill me a hot dog or a hamburger, I guess. <laughs> Thanks, everybody.